Hello, it's Magnus here, and today's special test, I wanted to focus in on the advantages of recording 10-bit versus 8-bit. Now, the GH5 lets you record in 10-bit, and I wanted to see in a real setup, is there an actual advantage to recording 10-bit? Now, most monitors and most displays, and probably the display you're using right now, doesn't let you capture the full 10-bit color depth that you'd expect to record and view from the GH5. But there are still advantages even if you don't have that type of color depth in your monitor, such as it, you're able to pull more colors and actually color correct and post a lot easier and a lot more flexible than you would if you recorded in 8-bit. And you wouldn't have such glaring issues as extreme color banding, which can get annoying. So without further ado, my tests are going to revolve around the following. Recording using the NX1, GH5, and the 5D Mark IV. This room is a bit dark, and that's on purpose because I've actually got my three cameras pointed at a light source. So I can pretty much get the dynamic range from bright to dark and see if there's any banding, see if there's any... Um, imperfections in the color and then of course see if you can pick up which one actually produced the color and the changes in light better out of the three cameras now the settings that I'm going to use is the GH5 is going to record 10 seconds in 10 bit in the same object and then 10 seconds in 8 bit that way we can compare the GH5 against itself and then you have the 5D Mark IV which records 8 bit 422 color so I'm going to do a 4k 422 color then I'm going to test the Samsung NX1 and only record it once 10 seconds and that will be 420 because that's the only color for color information that the NX1 records at so I've got all the three cameras color corrected against the same white balance settings and pointed at the wall trying to get the lamp centered and then capture around that and we'll see what we get here we go I'm gonna start with 10 bit 420 on the GH5 10 bit 4k and then on the NX1 I've got the 4k at 420 8 bit and then on the Canon I've got 422 8 bit and I'm gonna record 10 seconds of footage all pointed at the same um, the same target basically so here we go recording recording and recording now basically after 10 seconds I'm gonna shut them off and then the NX1 will drop out at after that and then we'll have a the two last recordings on the 5D Mark IV and the GH5 since that gives that different color information okay I think we've got enough so I'll stop there. NX1, you are done for the day. And 5D Mark IV, you are basically done. We are going to switch the GH5 to record in 4K, 30 frames per second, 8-bit. Okay? So that's a, that's a, that's a little bit of a more relaxed bit rate that you've got right there but and that's at 4k I think we've got enough footage there more than 10 seconds so the test again I want to pretty much have the settings matched and go from there I've just pretty much recorded all the footage that I think I need to go to post now I'm going to go to the computer and in the computer what I want to see is to see if how pure the color is on the walls. For example, when I'm looking at the wall and against the light, I'm gonna have a specific shot. And I wanted to see how much of that color information, especially in this dark setting, how much of that color information is retained and how much is blotchy and noisy. I wanna see how well the image sensor processes the video footage from each of these shots. So without further ado, let's jump to the computer. Here we are at the computer, and I'm going to start with a couple of the 8-bit comparisons first, and then move in with the 10-bit footage. 
So let's go into 8-bit 422 versus 8-bit 420 cameras. Now before I begin, I want to let you guys know that I began really looking at this footage right off the raw files from the Panasonic GH5 NX1 and the 5D Mark IV. However, Adobe recently released an update to their Adobe Premiere software. After I updated, I found that I started getting a lot more frequent crashes with the 10-bit Panasonic footage that I wasn't getting before I updated. Now, you, If you click into my previous videos, one where I scrub through the footage, you'll see that I was able to scrub fine through the Panasonic footage 10-bit and I didn't really have, I mean it was slow but it wouldn't crash on me. Now lately it's actually crashed on me so I actually converted the 10-bit footage, I, I encoded it basically using um, Adobe Encoder so that I can actually work with the 10-bit footage. I encoded it in 150 megabits per second which matches the 10-bit footage itself and I see virtually no actually no difference in the footage but here we go without further ado so what I did here was I scaled the three shots as much as I possibly can which made sense so that you can get pretty much the the corner of the lamp and then different shades of light on each of these shots now the the first shots that I'm going to compare is the 5D Mark IV at 8 bit 422 in 4K then the um, Panasonic GH5 8 bit 420 and then the Samsung NX1 8 bit 420 so those three shots, one, two, and two, and then three. So you can see, you'll notice the the 5D Mark IV is kind of a middle exposure. The GH5 is the brightest exposure, and then the NX1 is somewhat a different tan, but darker. But let's expand this footage so that you can see what I see and then we can look at it together and you can leave your comments down below on what you think of the footage and I'll just tell you my honest opinion by looking at it I figured that was the best way of doing this because as much as I looked at the footage and and try to really see if there was really any benefit um, I figured the best way to do it is with you guys and on the spot as the entire time that I've been looking at this footage I can honestly tell you I do see a difference but I want you guys to see it with me and that's what we're doing this video so starting with the 5D Mark IV 422 you know if I play this a little bit you have some compression artifacts that actually have to do with Adobe Premiere and the way it previews the file so we're gonna look at it still and uh, there's a little bit of detail that you could see in the the walls but barely any there's a lot of color loss and some slight banding I don't know how well this would show up in YouTube but there is some slight banding in these uh, 422 footage 8-bit but minimal so moving on to the GH5 and the GH5 at 420 it's a lot brighter so you should be able to pick up details more easily but you really can't um, it's there's a lot of color imperfections that really just loss of colors, especially in this edge area right here. I see a lot of greens due to the uh, compression, and it's just kind of really lost everywhere. Moving on to the NX1, and um, basically looking at this footage, you can kind of make out details in the wall um, pretty clearly, although I still see some weird color artifacts that are just floating around in here so that's the 8-bit footage comparison now let's move on to the GH5 itself so we're going to look at the GH5 10-bit versus 8-bit okay so the first half of the footage is is 10-bit the second half is 8-bit so now Looking at this beginning, this is the 10-bit footage, and I can make out a lot more detail actually in the walls. There's, there's a 
better transition through the corners of this light and you can make out a lot more detail. Now moving when it comes to 8-bit and boom, it just disappears and it's those smudges that we were talking about earlier. So recording in 10-bit, I mean there's 10-bit and there's 8-bit. You, there is a difference and both of these shots are actually uh, scaled 2039 times and they're in exactly the same positions when I recorded this as you saw previously I did not move the camera I just switched the the bit rate so there you go 10 bit 8 bit off the GH5 now let's do a comparison now this is 8-bit all three cameras I think we looked at that already so we're going to do a 10-bit GH5 versus all cameras in 8-bit now the GH5 to start it off is going to be 10-bit 422 the next shot that I'll show you kind of in the middle is the GH5 8-bit 420 so you can see that again on this comparison again then you'll see the NX1 8-bit 420 and then finally the 5D Mark IV 8-bit 422 so you you don't have the same bit depth but you do get a little bit more color information so so beginning footage is GH5 10-bit now as we saw before you get a lot more details less color imperfections though they still exist at this size because again the size of the footage has increased a lot more than you would ever realistically do so moving on this is the GH5 8-bit color that additional wall detail is lost you got a little bit more imperfections in the colors unfortunately it's it is what it is but again my, I honestly insist that if you're working with with this 4k footage regardless if you're shooting 8-bit or 10-bit it looks amazing so the third shot was the NX, NX1 8-bit again NX1 very splotchy but you can pick up the wall information um, a lot of the wall details do show up and now the, the compression itself is what makes it so blocky which is a bit frustrating but it still picks up a lot of wall detail and it's 420 now moving on finally to the 5D Mark IV and you do have a little bit of that wall detail that you could kind of see here and here but it I mean the, the, the compression that it uses is imperfect it's um, just to let you know ISO was at 200 for all of these tests and you do have a lot more noticeable banding despite the 422 um, color ratio so all in all I would look at the NX1 footage as I stated in my previous video versus the GH5 10 bit Though the GH5 seems to be cleaner in the compression rate, right? Thanks to the 150 megabits per second versus the NX1's 80, you do pick up a lot of the detail, which is pretty good. I mean, one thing that I've noticed about the NX1, it's really sharp. Sometimes too sharp, you know, sometimes you want to smooth out the footage, but. I believe that's what helps it pick up the detail in the walls and and I guess less banding when you when you get it than the actual 5D Mark IV, which I see a lot of purples and greens. So in the 5D Mark IV, you see a lot of banding that actually happens here and a lot of imperfections in the color, which can be a bit frustrating. My opinion is that the color information that you get and the color differences should really be about what you see and what you think works best for you. The 10-bit is worth using over the 8-bit on the GH5 itself, um, but it's very minimal, it's very minimal. You, you hardly notice a difference. Um, and then compared off the other cameras, the other cameras do an excellent job of picking up color information. 
um, even the NX1 with its 4208 bit and depending on the type of shot that you're using my personal opinion you use the tool that works best for you and if you're an artist you can create magic no matter what you're using again let me know what you think I it's my opinion is solely based on what I've been able to tell and what I've been able to see but I might not be right in your eyes. What do you guys think? What did you prefer off of the cameras that I use? Which ones look better to you? I know it's got YouTube progression, so it could be a little bit frustrating, but let me know in the comments below. And as always, like, share, and you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.